Welcome back, Duelists. I got another casual deck profile for you guys today. And as you saw from the marker up there, it's actually going to be for hires. Now, before I get into it, let's talk about why that's amazing. Um, most of the core stuff, all the actual for hire character cards, are like less than 20 cents a copy for the most part. So this is another one of those like really super budget casual decks, but this has a slight competitive edge to it because of some of the cards we're using in here. So let's go ahead and get you that profile. So we're going to run three copies of Ash Blossom. We're going to have three copies of Beat Blade Swordsman or Beat Bladesman for hire. Two copies Bravo Fighter for hire. We're going to be running two copies of Donpa, the Marksman for hire. One Dinah, the Hero for hire. Three copies Philo, Messenger for hire. We're going to have two copies of Helmer, Helmsman for hire. Three copies of Raphael, Champion for Hire. Two copies Recon for Hire, or Scout for Hire. Three copies Seal, Strategist for Hire. One copy Wiz, Wiz Sage for Hire. So that's our monster count. Our spells are going to be the single copy of Called by the Grave, one instant fusion. Three copies of Mayhem for Hire. One copy Mind Control, one Monster Reborn, and one Reinforcement of the Army. And our trap lineup is going to be a single Solemn Judgment, three Solemn Strikes, and my favorite trap card right now, there can be only one at three. So that's our main deck. Let's go over to our extra deck for our fusions and our, uh, honestly, just our instant fusion targets. You're going to have the Millennium Eyes Restrict and the Thousand Eyes Restrict. We are going to run some Xyz cards in here. We're going to have a copy of Abyss Dweller. One Exiton Knight, a number 101 uh, Silent Honor Arc, a number 41 Baguska ter Terribly Tired Tapir. Try saying that one four times fast. And a copy of number 60 Dugaris the Timeless. And our links are a little more expanded with this deck uh, because this deck actually came out during the Link era pre Master Rule 5 and uh, does better with them. So we got a Borlo Dragon here. I got two copies of Folgo, the Justice for Hire. I got one Nightmare Cerberus, one Nightmare Phoenix, and one Nightmare Unicorn. A single copy of Link Karibo, and a copy of Saryuja Skulldred. Now, if you guys were only here for the deck list, class is officially dismissed. If you guys are here for a little more involved discussion about it, let's get it for you. So... Ash Blossom really needs no introduction at this point. Uh, so let's get to the uh, actual characters. So like Beat. During the main phase, you can special summon one monster for hire from the hand, except Beat. And if a monster for hire is special summoned to your side of the field while you control this monster, except during the damage step, you can add one for hire, mon or one for hire from your deck to the hand, monster-wise, and then you can only use this effect once per turn. A lot of these cards are going to be structured like this. They will special summon somebody from the hand. And then once they themselves are on the field and somebody else is special summoned, they have a secondary effect. So Beat is our tutor, and he's not that bad. He's a little 312. Um, Bravo here. During the main phase, special summon one. Accept him. And if a monster for hire special summon to your field while you control this, accept the damage step. You can have all monsters that are for hires currently on the field gain 500 AD until the end of the turn. So he's actually going to pump everybody up. That's why I run him at two. I don't. I feel like searching is more important than powering up. So Donpa here, again, you once once per turn you can special summon one from the hand. Uh, if one is special summoned to the field while you control this, you can target one face-up card on the field and destroy it. So he's a little bit of control aspect for you. We got the single Dyna, and again, uh, this one's totally different. So if this is special summoned, you can banish cards from your opponent's graveyard up to the number of monsters for hire you control with different names. Um, you can only use this effect once per turn, and monsters you can, your opponent controls cannot target Monsters for higher you control for attacks except this one. So he's pretty good. Um, again, we're only going to run a single on him. Um, 
battling really isn't a big deal these days. Uh, a lot of people use loop effects and stuff. So like, that's why we have a hand trap in the deck. That's why called by the grave is in the deck. That's why solemn strikes are in the deck. Um, but it is good that you can start banishing cards from the opponent's graveyard. Um, and again, that controls a lot of decks. Like I, I don't think thunder dragons is big a deal as it was previously when this deck was running around or, uh, even Chaos right now, since the Toon Chaos set's still fairly relevant and new. Um, but he's, he's just good. Uh, one of my favorite picks for this deck is Philo. During the main phase, you can special one from the hand, except same name. And if a monster for higher special summoned to your field while you control this, target a monster that's for higher in the graveyard, special summon to defense, place it on the bottom of the deck if it leaves the field. You can only use each effect once per turn. And it's great because, number one, we're going to be able to put the card back into our deck. We don't have to deal with the usual effect of banishing the card from the game. And uh, it's just that it connects your hand back to the discard pile, which makes it an absolute winner. You're also going to notice the one-star level, and that's going to help you out with Link Karibo later on at the extra deck. So it's a good card. Helmer here. Again, during the main phase, special summon a monster for hire from the hand except same name. And if a monster for hire is special summoned to your side of the field while you control this monster, you can discard one card for hire, draw one card. And he's got a nice healthy 2k defense stat. And since he's a draw card, we were like, yeah, give him two. Now, Raphael is pretty much the boss monster in the main deck at the 2800. Um, if this card is special summoned, you can excavate cards from the top of the deck equal to the number of monsters for higher you control with different names except himself. And if you do add one of those cards to your hand, shuffle the rest back to the deck. When your opponent activates a monster effect as a quick effect, you may discard one card for higher and negate the activation. You can only use each effect once per turn. Now this is great because he's actually going to help us with the, like, killing of monster effects, taking down loops... He's very strong on his own. Um, and we wanted to maximize that by playing him at the full three count. Um, and since these guys really do just jump to the field, uh, it's not hard to get him on the field. You really, you're really you never going to attribute to actually play him. You're just going to play a smaller character, pick one, and then play him. Or, you know, you could bring him back with uh, Philo. 2200 defense is still not bad. We got the two recons. So again, special summon one, not not a recon. And if a monster for hire is special summon from the special summon to the field while you controls this, uh, target a set card on the field and destroy it. So he's the set. And our boy Donpa is the face up. Which is kind of cool because they almost look like they could be twins. They have the same effects, same stat, same attribute. Uh, no, I take that back. Their stats are actually reversed. Um, but that's good. Seal here, again, same thing. Special summon one from the hand, not himself. And if one is special summoned while he's on the field, you can target a monster for hire in the graveyard and add it back to your hand. Since recurring your cards to the hand allows you to create a whole nother summoning loop, this guy, we again maximized him by playing the full three count. And of course, the one copy of Wiz. And if you guys can tell me what the heck this thing is actually supposed to be, my wife thinks it's supposed to be a uh, like a squid octopus thing. Uh, my one friend says a jellyfish. I say it almost looks like an axolotl. Um, if you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, when this one is special summoned, you can gain 500 life points for each monster for higher. You control with different names, again, except for itself. And when your opponent activates a spell or trap or effect, as a quick effect, you can discard one for higher card, negate the activation. Does not say to destroy the card, so just keep that in mind. If it's a monster card, you're only negating the effect. You're not actually going to destroy the effect. And uh, sometimes that's the lesser. So that's why Wiz is only at a single count. With our spells, Called by the Grave again needs no real introduction, neither does Instant Fusion. Uh, the Mayhem for Hire is essentially Monster Reborn for this deck. Target a monster for Hire in the graveyard, special summon it in defense. You can only activate one per turn. Not bad. Again, we got the Mind Control because this is very Link-oriented, and Links don't matter. We're just going to take your monsters and do it. Monster Reborn, great. Reinforcement of the Army. 
If we go back through here, I think Beat was the only actual warrior. But since Beat is the tutor, I did feel that it was necessary to go ahead and give you just that additional search for him so that you can get the rest of your searches off as fluidly as possible. And it, he is the only warrior, so... Um, Solemn Judgment really needs no introduction. It's just pay half your life points, negate the, uh, monster that would be summon. And since it just says summon, that's normal, that's flip, that's special. Uh, or the spell or trap being activated. Pay half the life points, negate destroy. Solemn Strike, great card. Monster monsters would be special summoned or monster effect is activated. Pay 1500, negate destroy. Now, the card that is amazing for this deck is there can be only one. Now, this is probably what elevates this from being just a normal run-of-the-mill casual deck to actually being able to be played competitively. Again, you might choose to play different cards than I did if you do that. Uh, but a quick rundown is each player can only control one monster of each type. If a, if a player controls two or more monsters of the same type, they must send some to the graveyard so they control no more than one of that type. Now, very in much in the same vein, and I believe all the rulings are the same between this, goes and match in Rivalry of the Warlords. And what that means is, if I had... Let's go to the extra deck. Now, you know what? There's a Relinquished card right there. Relinquished is a spellcaster. Wiz is a spellcaster. If I use the instant fusion, I cannot try to play this because I already have this. Um, but more so like a lot of decks that really do play. Uh, I know that I've been playing a lot of against Black Wings and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to space out now. My one friend runs Ojamas, and the other one wants to run a Fiend deck. Uh, a trap card as simple as there can be only one literally just takes all of their plays away because they can only have the one monster card. Meanwhile, we've tried to split up, or mainly because this deck just has, you know, here's a warrior, here's a reptile, here's a beast, here's a beast warrior, here's a wing beast, there's an aqua, there's a dragon... This is the uh, beast that comes back a second time. That's another beast warrior. And then there's a spellcaster. So for the most part, the main deck is actually spread out enough to not get hurt by this and allow you to soft lock your opponent with a floodgate effect. So let's get to our extra deck. Before we do that, I know I have a little habit or a tradition of throwing up a random card from another game as a dual center. So today we're just going to throw Nisa the World Waker from MTG. We'll toss her up there a little bit. So the Millennium Eyes Restrict is actually a pretty great card and differs from the Thousand Eyes Restrict. And that's an important distinction to make. Thousand Eyes Restrict is pretty basic. I've already gone over this card before. But uh, he doesn't take the battle damage or doesn't make your opponent take battle damage when you do swing with it. If you were to. And uh, he can only hold one monster at a time, whereas the, the Millenniumizer Strict I have also gone over, uh, I mentioned that it can hold more than one card at a time, but right now we're only using it to trap monster effects. So once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect, you can target a monster or effect monster the controller in the graveyard, so the hand trap they just dropped. Equip that target to this card, gain the stats of the card, and monsters with the equipped monster's name cannot attack, and their effects on the field and their activated effects are negated. So, you pitch an Ash Blossom to stop my reinforcement of the army, but I had the uh, forbearance to play my <laughs> instant fusion first. I'm going to go ahead and equip your Ash Blossom to my restrict, negating out the effect. And again, the longer you can leave a card like this on the field, the better it's going to get. But this isn't going to happen in this deck, so oh well. Uh, the overlay lineup is actually pretty basic. You got the Abyss Dweller. It's just going to cancel out Hand Traps, Exiton Knight. During a chain during the, uh, either your main phase or the opponent's battle phase, if they have more total cards than you do, detach material, destroy everything but this card. And your opponent takes no further damage for the turn. So if I get behind, I can actually wipe the board and try to start over. 
The Silent Honor arc goes ahead and tries to remove a card off your opponent's side of the field by equipping it to itself as an overlay unit. Baguska is great for those defensive plays where you just need a couple of turns to get your cards together. And Dagaris with his three effects is a little more relevant here than he was in the other deck that I used. So you can detach two materials from this card then activate one of the following effects. You can skip your next draw phase, draw two, drop one. You can skip your next main phase, one, to special summon one monster from the graveyard in defense, which is going to help with the link plays here. Or you can skip the battle phase of your next turn and double over the attack of one monster you control until the end of the turn. Now, I'm only going to run them in one, but if you did have two, um, you would be only being able to use one effect of him per turn. So even if you had multiple copies, he'd still be like a hard one of. Um, and our links are the Borlo Dragon, and we're going to use him for the spectacularness. That is, he can't be targeted with uh, monster effects. Once per turn, you can target a face-up monster on the field, and it loses 500 attack defense. Quick effect means mine turn, your turn, so both turns. Uh, also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to that effect's activation. So that's just something that's going to happen. Sort of a spell speed 4 effect. And the last one is the one I'm more interested in. At the start of the damage step, if this card attacks an opponent's monster, you can place that monster in a zone that this card points to and take control of it. Send it to the graveyard during the end phase of the next turn. So we can either use your big bad as my meat shield or link material. So, very cool. Folgo here is actually a pretty cool card. He needs to be three monsters with different types. The deck's got you covered, guys. Cannot be used as link material. That's fine. If this card is link summoned, you can special summon one monster for hire with a different type from the three monsters used to link summon this card from the deck in defense mode. Not that hard to do. Usually I'll end up playing Wiz at this point. Uh, if a card of cards your opponent controls is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can draw one card. Then if you control three or more monsters for hire with different names, draw two additional cards. You can only use each effect once per turn. So Folgo is sort of a Swiss Army Blade of effects here. He's going to do a lot for you. Um, and he just looks really cool. So I know I shouldn't have to uh, talk about the Nightmare Engine, but for the most part, it's all the same stuff. They have to be monsters with different names, equal to the Link rating, so A2, A2, and A3. Um... If this one is Link Summon, discard a card, target a special summon monster on the opponent's side of the field in their main zones and destroy it. And if it was co-linked when you did this, draw a card. Um, that's pretty good. Um, the Phoenix is the same effect, except for a spell trap the opponent controls, destroy it. And then if it was co-linked, draw a card. Nightmare Unicorn, pretty much the same thing. Discard a card, target a card on the field, return it to the deck. And if it was co-linked, draw a card. Uh, they also have some basic, like, if cards are co-linked effects, but those are the main effects I run them for. Now, Link Kribo, I you maybe thought it was just for Philo, but if I'm being honest, it's really to help with not losing out on the advantage of having generated one of the two Restrict monsters. They're both uh, level ones. Um... And rather than letting the instant fusion destroy it during the end phase of the turn, I'd much rather play the Link Karibo, especially since this guy can recur and it has a great effect anyway. So anybody who's not familiar with this, uh, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you contribute this, change the opponent's monster to zero attack power until the end of the turn. If this is in your graveyard as a quick effect, you can tribute a level one monster, special summon this card, and you could use this effect once per turn. So... You could essentially link twice with the same guy, or we could use him to zero out somebody's account to go for, like, a, a, just an epic attack. And then there's my favorite character in this whole thing, that's the Saryuja Skeldred, because we do so much with so many different names. Um, this guy gains effects based on the number of materials used for him. He needs to be monsters with different names. It's anywhere from two to four, and because of that... Each effect can be gained. So the first effect is if you have two or more. So any monster, monster is normal or special summon to his zone. This card points to that monster gains 300 AD. Now this does 
and can benefit the opponent because you are going to point to their side of the field as well. That's how that's going to work when you're doing this. So if your opponent were to play something right there, yes, they would get some power. Um, if you got the three or more once per turn during the main phase, you could special summon a monster card from your hand. And of course, if you did all four, the, the best effect, uh, not that you're going to miss out on the other two because you're going to get all three effects, but the last effect is draw four, then place three from the hand at the bottom of the deck in any order. And in a deck where you maybe need to get different names, or you're trying to search out that there can be only one, or you could use an extra strike on the board, or you could use the monster reborn, it just opens the deck up to more plays. So I think, for the most part, this deck is under $20 altogether, including the extra deck. Uh, there might be a couple of cards in here that are a little more expensive than what I thought, um, be that as it may. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.